In an earlier video, we designed an interface circuit such that we have this L circuit interface, R1 and R2, to be 270 ohms and R2 to be 75 ohms. And that design here satisfied the input resistance of 300 ohms and an output of V2 is equal to 2 volts. Now we have another design that Now that we have another design that is claimed to satisfy the above design where we have V2, again, V2 is equal to 2 volts and an input resistance of 300 ohms. In this problem, we're asked to verify these same requirements where V2 is 2 volts and Rn is 300 ohms. Also, it is desired that the 50 ohm load see a low output resistance and we want to determine which circuit meets this requirement so we have a third constraint our, our output seen at this output port of this interface circuit is equal to 50 ohms in other words we're matching the output resistance with our output load of 50 ohms. Now let's evaluate the design here to see if it satisfies the input resistance of 300 ohms as well as the output voltage of 2 volts delivered to this 50 ohm load. So looking at Rn here we see that this 750 ohm resistor is in parallel to the series combination of 450 ohms plus the 50 ohm load. In other words R in is equal to 750 in parallel with the series combination of 450 plus 50 which is equal to 750 in parallel with the 500 which should be less than 500 and it turns out to be less than 300 ohms now let's look at V1. V1 in this case is labeled at the input port which is the following plus and minus V1. So V1 is basically a voltage divider consisting of Rn over Rn plus 300 and then we multiply by the 40 volts that turns out to be 20 volts. Rn is 300. 300 in the denominator plus 300 is 600, so 300 over 600 is 20 volts. Let me just write that down for clarification. 300 over 300 plus 300 times 40 and then half of that 40 is 20 volts. All right. Now, taking this voltage 40, we see that this 40 is also across the 450 and the 50 ohm load. So using basically a voltage divider again, V2 is equal to 50 divided by 450 plus 50 times 20, which is equal to 50 over 500 which is one-tenth of 20 or equal to 2 volts. So what we did is we verified the output constraint of 2 volts and an input resistance of 300 ohms. Next we need to compare the output resistances. First of all we turn off the 40 volt source and replace it by short. So we take this 40 volt supply and we replace it with a short. So this look back resistance seen at the output port, we can see that the 300 is in parallel with the 750. So for this circuit, R out is equal to 450 plus 750 
in parallel with the 300 ohm when we turn off the 40 volt supply. So what we have again is 450 plus the parallel combination of 300 in parallel with 750. And that turns out to be 664 ohms. Now let's look at the second circuit that we did earlier and compare its output resistance. Okay, so here what we have is 300 in series with 270 in parallel with the 75 ohms. And we note that anything in parallel will always be smaller than either of the resistors. In this case, the smaller resistor is 75 ohms, so it's going to be less than 75 ohms since they're connected in parallel. So in this case, R out is 300 plus 270. That's the sum, but this is connected because we remember we when we find the output resistance, R out, we short the 40 volt power supply. So 300 plus 270 in parallel with the 75 ohm. That turns out to be 66.3 ohms. So it's pretty much smaller than the one that we just did of 664. So it's about 10 times as smaller. So it satisfies the requirement. So this figure not only satisfies the input constraint of 300 ohms, but it satisfies the 2 volt and this design sees a lot lower output resistance than the one we just did of 664. Than the one we just did that has an output resistance of 664 ohms.